Hey guys, I am back again talking more about Orange Tree's Evolution Flatwound Bass. So I did a demo about a week ago called Chicken in a Suit that featured it. Today I wanted to take a closer look inside the interface itself, uh, explore some of the different snapshots and tones that they've created, some of the additional parameters that you can tweak, and just basically, oh man, the pun. Well anyway, you'll see. Let's just jump right into it. So if you've seen my Evolution Texas Twang demo, you'll see that the layout of the flat one bass is very similar. We've got our basic articulations here in the play menu where we can select them based on their velocity. We can go over to the tone section here and we've got kind of a, a little guitar bass rig with lots of different effects here that are very interesting to play with. And we've got our setup where we can adjust some more of the uh, fine tuning parameters like the pick noise, uh, release positions, dynamic morphing, dynamic curve. Uh, we can adjust the capo position. We can adjust the legato volume. It looks like they've made some improvements from the Evolution Texas Twang um, to allow for even more customizable options, which is exciting. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up some of their snapshots so you can see our options here. You'll see we've got quite a bit. It even scrolls down a little bit. So I'm just gonna play through a couple of these presets here so you can hear how, uh, how they sound. Let's just skip around here. Yeah, really, really nice tone there. Try a couple more. Now all of the plugins that you're hearing and the effects are all built in. This is straight out of the box. Let's play maybe one or two more here. And nice and gritty. So as you can hear, there's a lot of different options here in terms of color and tone. Um, really worth checking out these snapshots, at least for starters. And then if you want to tweak from there, you can go for it. Um, so like I said before, we've got our different articulations here. Now basically the way they've mapped this out is each of these articulations are currently unmapped. If we choose to map them, we can choose how we map them, either by a MIDI CC controller or with velocity, which is probably the more common route. So if I, for example, went velocity here, and let's see, I'll turn this off. Right now we have palm mute picked. We would unmap this. And now we can control this palm mute fingered based on the velocity that we give it. So if we do all the way from zero to 127 and turn this off, it'll be triggered with every velocity. Now, if we wanted to still have the sustained option, uh, let's say we do finger just like the mute is. We can kind of tweak between these two. So we could say maybe I want uh, the fingered velocity between 58 and 127. And then I want this to be everything else of so 57. And that would sound like this. So there's a lot of options um, for basically tailoring this to your playing style and also towards what you're looking for for the track. Now if we go to the tone section, I'll just scroll through these a bit so you can see what we've got. We've got lots of different plugins, distortion, tremolo, volume, we've got a wah pedal, reverb, we've got our own EQ in here, a compressor, chorus, flanger, another reverb, delay, and we have our basically uh, different amplifiers that are creating our tone and a spring verb. Um, so there's lots of options to play in here. This is basically what's tweaking the dry sound when we go through the snapshots. 
So each of these snapshots is more or less altering the different effects in here. And then lastly, we have our setup page. And personally, I actually use this probably the most. Um, we have lots of different options in here. Like I said before, uh, we can double track the bass up to quadruple tracking if we wanted to. To get an even fatter sound, uh, we can choose how we want our outputs with different audio outputs or just auto panning. We can humanize the entire performance. So if we wanted the whole thing to kind of uh, be a little less quantized around the beat, we can do so here. We can choose our picking style between economy picking, uh, an eighth notes, 16th notes, downstrokes only. Uh, gives us a little bit more options in terms of how the uh, piece is played. We can control the amount of pick noise that we want, which is a really nice feature. I think that might even be new to this. I could be wrong. Um, our release volume, our fretting position, which is another added layer of control. If we want to have a little bit more tone control and we want things to sound a little bit higher up on the bass or lower on the bass, we can do so. Uh, we can choose our dynamic curves. And part of why this is useful is because uh, different keyboards play in different ways. So for example, my keyboard tends to lean very heavily on the higher velocities. So it's difficult for me to get the kind of softer samples uh, out of my performances. So if I were to change this feature, I could kind of lean the performance more towards what I'm looking for out of my keyboard, whether I want it to sound lean more soft, or more loud. Both of those, they're me playing this keyboard the exact same way, just a different tendency on the performance. There's also a new added feature here for MIDI guitar mode, which is very exciting, I think, for guitarists. So if you have a MIDI guitar, you can actually play this in directly uh, with your instrument, which is very cool. We have alternate tuning, which I believe I did use for this piece. I use drop D because I just love drop D. We can control our legato volume and we can control the range. So if we're not liking these kind of hammer-ons, we could turn this off. We get a different performance. All of these options, by the way, are automatable. So if for one section we wanted this major second kind of hammer-on, we could do so. And if we wanted to change it, we could. The way you do that in contact is by right-clicking, learn MIDI CC automation, and then just wiggle or move the dial that you want to control that feature. So for example, I have a, a knob on my keyboard. I could adjust this and now contact has read it and it's automatable. We can change the bend mode uh, and the intervals that we have within that bend. Vibrato, we could change the vibrato curve. As you can see, they've really, really added a lot of fine tuning details for this, which is very exciting. And then we have different uh, upstroke and downstroke options. And that about covers our setup here. So that's the basic overview of the flatline bass. Now I'm going to go ahead and play my cue and just talk about some of the tweaking that I did to make this uh, performance happen. So most of this was played directly in, but there were some things I did to adjust and give some of the uh, additional samples and more realism. So let's just play a little bit out and I'll talk about it. So as you can hear, it's basically a straightforward pattern. Uh, the difference is you'll notice a lot of these very short notes here, and they're also very quiet in velocity. All of these notes were added after the fact. So I played the riff in as it was, and then added these to kind of give a little bit more of a groove funky element to it. So these should be triggered as um, our palm mute kind of sound, almost like ghost notes on a piano or another instrument. So you'll hear without it, it has a little bit less character to it. Whereas when we add this,
you get a feeling more that there's actually a human behind this and that it's he's kind of interacting with the riff. Same over here. Here's without it. And here's with it. Very subtle touch, but it's just something that I like. There's also a couple variations on that riff that happened throughout the piece. Stuff that I did add in later, such as this little triplet pattern. Anything to kind of spice up the riff a little bit. I'll solo that so you can hear it again. It sounds great. Um, and then really the riff continues mostly through the piece. Uh, there's not too much more to say about it except for there's some change in dynamics that just give it a little bit more quality. And then at the end, we kind of have a bass solo that features some of the other, the more uh, melodic qualities of the bass. So I'll play that for you so you can hear it. So I'll just play that actually soloed so you can hear it as well. Now the beauty of this is I really, you can see, I didn't do very much tweaking at all. Part of that is because I knew there are other instruments involved. The other part is it just sounded great right out of the box. And I, I really didn't have to work too hard with finessing it or making it sound real. For me, I think um, this tone that I chose worked really well. This was actually um, tough and scruffy. That was the snapshot. And in terms of EQing compression, all I did really was just what I do with standard bass. I added a default electric bass compressor right here. And I added a little bit of high end just because I wanted it to, that brighter end to kind of poke through the rest of the instrumentation. But again, not that many effects plugged in. It sounded great right out of the box. And it was really just about uh, showing how playable this thing is and how much fun it is to work with. I really, really enjoyed this writing this cue. And I think in terms of my VSTs, it is the best electric bass plugin I have. I love playing with the different patches, the tones, experimenting. For a non-bassist like myself, it's a great resource. Um, I can get really, really great tones, which would take me hours upon hours to get with the electric bass that I have hanging up on my wall. So highly recommend you check this out. Check out Orange Tree's other products. They're a really, really great company. So much fun to work with. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.